joining me. I'm Tracy and I take thrift store items and upcycle them, turn them into fun clothing, purses, accessories. I sold for many, many years. And now I'm just sharing my passion here on YouTube with you. And today I want to make a boho top. And what I found at the thrift store was this cool lacy dress. Well, it's not so cool. It's kind of matronly. It looks like maybe it was a mother of the bride dress at one point, but it has beautiful lace. And I think it was handmade or maybe custom made for maybe a mother of the bride or something like that. And so this is two pieces actually. So this I'm not going to use, but it has buttons and someday I think what I want to do with this is turn it into like lacy bib overalls, but not using this part. I'm just going to use this top part of it and some curtains that I thrifted. And I look for curtain, lace curtains a lot when I go to the thrift store. These are really pretty. They have like a fine detail. And I kind of avoid lace curtains that are real stiff and would be scratchy against the skin if you were to wear it. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll use. I have lots of lace curtains. I also have this vintage lace tablecloth. I got this at a thrift store too. That's not as common to find, but now and then I find them at thrift store. So I'm not real sure which one of these I'm going to use on the top yet, but um, I'll take you with me on my little journey and we'll figure it out together. So the first thing I did was turn the top inside out because I want to remove these shoulder pads and they are just stitched super loose in there. So I don't even need a seam ripper. I am just going to snip these out with my scissors. So I'll get those removed. Okay, so I have the top of the dress sitting here and you don't have to have a dress. I find like lace and crochet tops at the thrift store all the time. You could do a similar thing with a lace top and curtains. So on this one, I love the sleeves. And normally I will upcycle the sleeves as well, make a flare sleeve or balloon sleeve, something like that. But these are just so pretty. I'm going to leave them as is. But say you have a top like this and you want a longer or a different sleeve. I have a few tutorials that show how to do a flared sleeve and a balloon sleeve and I'll put the link to those in my description but for this one I'm just basically going to work on the body of the top so what I did to start is I tried it on and I want sort of an empire waist that just sets below the chest and so I have a little safety pin right here so I put it on and I decided where I wanted it to be and then I went down another half an inch for seam allowance and stuck a safety pin. And now I'm going to cut that off and I'll show you that. Okay, so my safety pin is here and I am measuring up from the bottom to see how far up that safety pin is. And on mine, it's 18 and a half inches up from the bottom. So there are lots of different ways you can cut this, but this is just what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay my yardstick down at the side and I'm going to mark, I'm using a black marker. <laughs> you know, you can use any writing tool you want. A lot of people would be scared to use a black marker. It's so permanent, but okay. So I'm just going to mark in a few spaces, 18 and a half inches. And it'll just be my guideline for my guide for cutting. I'm going to remove that safety pin and I'm just going to follow those black marks that I made and cut this bottom part off. 
Now, I'll save this. I may or may not use it as a detail on this top, but it's so beautiful, it's going to go up on my rack for future upcycling. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to measure, I'm adding an asymmetrical ruffle basically to the bottom of this. And I want to measure how much fabric I need to cut off my curtain. So I'm measuring the bottom of this and I get 24 inches. Now I'm going to double that because there's a front and a back side. So 24 and 24 is 48. Now the standard rule of thumb when you add a ruffle to something is double that measurement. So I have 48 circumference around the bottom of this top and I'm going to double that number to 96 so that I have lots of um, extra fabric to pleat as I sew. So I'm going to jot down that number 96 and use it in a little bit here. Okay, so this is what I decided to use for the bottom part of my top. And all this time, I thought it was a curtain, but it's actually a tablecloth because this ruffle goes all the way around and there's no rod pocket, so that's a tablecloth. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is, because I want it asymmetrical, I'm going to cut that ruffle off and I'm going to save it for later. And then I am going to cut this up. I want to just make a long rectangle. It's going to be 21 inches tall because when I had it on, I measured how long I want my top. You may like yours a lot shorter. I want mine long. so. 21 inches this way, and then that measurement that we got, that 96, 96 inches long. So I may have to most likely piece two, two of these together once I cut the 20, unless this is 96 inches long, I haven't measured it. So basically I'm cutting out a rectangle 21 inches tall and 96 inches long. Okay, so my tablecloth is only 67 inches long, so I am going to have to cut out two 21 inch pieces. And you can do it however you want. I'm just taking a yardstick, and this is the 21. I'm lay, laying it at the edge, the bottom here. And I just eyeball this. I just cut across to the top of the yardstick, move it over, mark 21 inches, I just cut it across like that and I'll do that twice on this tablecloth because this won't be long enough. So now I have my two pieces cut and I'm just going to sew them together so that it's long enough and I will use white thread. If I had off white I would use that because this is sort of an ecru color but I just have white that'll be fine. And I will just do about a quarter inch seam allowance and just no, no pinning at all. I'll just take it to my machine and kind of line it up as I go. Zigzag stitch on my largest setting, zigzag stitch setting, and sew it together. I am going to load a couple bobbins because zigzag stitching takes a lot of thread. So I'll get at least two of these loaded up. So I am set my stitch on the largest zigzag that I have and now my tension right here, when you use a real fine thin fabric, you want to put this on a lower number. I'm going to put it on about two 
and go forward, back stitch, and sew all the way down the edge. And I basically am just lining the edge of my seam here with the side of my presser foot. I'm not sure if I mentioned this. The sides do not matter. They're both the same on mine, but if sides, if you have a right side and a wrong side, on this project, I'm putting right sides together. A lot of times I do wrong sides together because I like to see that seam and the fraying and all that. But on this, I would personally do right sides together. Okay, so now I have my two pieces all sewn together. And it's longer than the 96 that I need, but I'm not going to cut that off right now. I'll wait till I'm done sewing and trim off what extra is left. That way I don't have to be super careful that I'm going to run out of fabric here. Okay, so now I want to sew this ruffle piece onto the top. And I have my top inside out because I want to do right sides together. Now you can pin this if you want, just so that you know you have enough ruffle and you're not over pleating in some areas and then you run out at the end but I've done this enough that I can eyeball this but if you're more comfortable pinning it all on go right ahead so what I'm going to do is here is my rectangle I am going to start sewing and I won't pin this or anything but I'm going to start at the seam and I will, this will be right sides together, so I'll lay my rectangle on top of my shirt like this. And at that seam, I will start sewing, but I won't start at the very edge of the lace. I'm going to start about two inches in. That way when I'm all done, I have a flap to sew together because I don't want this to be open on the side. I'll need to sew it together, so I'm going to leave myself a little flap to do that with. So I'll go about two inches in, start it at the seam, do my stitch, my back stitch, and as I sew, I will create my pleats. About every two inches, I will overlap this lace about half an inch on top of itself. And you can make your pleats as little or as big as you want. That's just kind of a standard ruffle pleat that I make. Go another couple inch, sew that down. Go another couple inches or inch and a half and create another pleat. And sew. And do that until you get all the way around. And when you get to the side seam that we left open, I will stop about two inches from where I started sewing. And then I'll show you what I do to complete that ruffle to sew the side together. Okay, so I'm just taking the bottom of my shirt here, finding that side seam, and I am going to just set it under my presser foot while I mess around with this to try to find. I want to make sure that that, seam that I created is this would be the right side the finished side and this would be the frayed wrong side I want that I want to see that frayed wrong side so because I want right sides together so I'll just make sure this was I'm just making sure that this is in the proper position okay so I will start two inches in set that on the seam and I have my machine set on the zigzag stitch still and I will run the edge of these two pieces along the side of my presser foot so I'll just go forward and back to lock that stitch in okay and now I'll make my first pleat about two inches from there overlap it 
So, and then two inches overlap. And continue doing, actually, two inches seems like too much. I think I'm going to go a little less. You know, you just kind of eyeball things. If it doesn't look right, you can adjust that. All right. I'll get over to the other, just keep sewing till I get to the other side, and I'll show you how I put those seams together. Okay, so I just realized I forgot to turn my shirt right side out, but I'm going to go with it. I'm not, I'm almost over halfway done. I'm not going to seam rip all this out just to turn this inside out. I like exposed seams, so I'm just going to go with it. That's going to be the new look, wrong sides together. <laughs> okay, so I got all the pleating done. And this is where I started. Here's the flap sewn at that seam. Now here's where I ended, about an inch and a half from that seam. And I also left a flap on this side. I want enough to do one more little pleat and enough for seam allowance to sew this together. So now I'll just take those two flaps, go to my sewing machine, and this is right sides together. And I will do a zigzag stitch all along this 21 inch ruffle. And then I'll show you what I do. Okay, so here's the side seam that I just sewed. And now where it's attached to the top, I still have a little hole and I just need to sew that together. So I'm putting this ruffle back over the top the way we started with wrong sides together. And then I'm just finishing, uh, now I gotta find the hole. Where'd it go? Right here. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so I am just putting this back in my machine where I left off. I'll go back over top of that last stitch a little bit so that it's nice and secure. And I'll make my last little pleat. And sew that hole shut. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a minute and all these seams that I sewed, I'm going to just trim them up nicely. And then I will come back. So this is what it's looking like so far. Nice and flowy because of all the pleating. And now what I want to do is cut it again. I want it shorter in the front, long on the side, and then shorter in the back and long on the side. So both the front and the back, a lot of times I do high-low and I will only cut an arc or arch in the front, but this time I'm going to do it the front and back so that I have kind of a longer side, shorter in front and back. Okay, so now what I want to do is cut that arch and I want mine 12 inches down from the waistline and I put a pin in it. I marked the 12 inches and I want it the pin centered. Now you can measure it this way to find the center, but I have this applique here and there's the center of it. I can just kind of eyeball that and find the center and put my pin there. And so now what I'm going to do is just cut it. Okay, so 
to cut it, here's, let's see, let me show you a corner. Okay, I'm not, this is the corner basically. I'm not going to make a sharp point right here. I'm going to come in about an inch and a half and subtly cut that. That way the two sides will be a little bit rounded. And again, probably drives you crazy, but I am just going to eyeball this. Now you can mark your arch or stick pins and kind of mess with it and see where you want yours. But for me, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And I've done this enough that I feel pretty comfortable doing it. So I'm starting about an inch in from the side and I'm just cutting both sides of the top to that pin. And I'm just going to go slightly underneath that pin. And I am just going to cut to the opposite side about an inch in from that seam or from the edge. Okay. Okay. So remember that ruffle that I cut off of that tablecloth in the very beginning? I am going to sew it on. I've got lots here. I've got plenty to go all the way around. And I'm going to sew that onto the bottom of the top. And on this one, I'm not going to pleat it. I'm just going to sew it straight on. I'm afraid if I pleat it, it'll look too childish and roughly. And also, I'm not sure I would have enough if I did all that pleating. So I am just going to start at the very edge and I am going to start in about two inches like I did the large ruffle here so that I can close it up when I'm all done. I'll start at the very edge. I'll overlap right on top of the top. Now there's a right and a wrong side to this. One side is pretty messy looking and that's actually the side I want. <laughs> I'm going to just lay it right on top with the messy side facing me, overlapping about half an inch. And I won't pin this or anything. I'll just sew it at my machine and I will use a zigzag stitch, go all the way around. And when I get to the edge, I'm just going to sew the sides together and finish it just like we did on this. Okay, so I'm just starting to sew this ruffle on. And this is the point on the side that really has sort of a sharp curve. I am going to put one pleat in my ruffle right there. That will just help it lay nicer. And then when I get to the opposite side, the long curve. I'll put a pleat right there too. It'll just lay cuter. But the rest I'll just sew straight on. Okay, it's all done. That was pretty simple. It didn't take long at all. Wouldn't this be cute with some shorts? I have a kind of a beige tank top underneath, but you could wear black or a white lacy cami. Be a cute swimsuit cover up, cute with a skirt. I have a long lacy off-white skirt, very versatile. Thank you so much for watching.